welcome to another AMA with Kadena Project Network. In this episode, we'll be speaking with the teams from Kadena Birds and Minted. This conversation was recorded on October 7th, 2022, live on Twitter Spaces. The views and expressions in this AMA do not represent the views of KPN directly and are not to be considered as financial advice. Please make sure to do your own research on the projects presented. Also make sure to follow our account to be alerted of new uploads. Now let's get started. Enjoy. Welcome to another AMA with Kadena Project Network. Today we are talking with the teams from Kadena Birds and Mintit. Kadena Birds is a pixel uh, bird NFT that is coming out and building on Kadena. And of course, Mintit is one of the newest launch pads on Kadena. So let's get right into this. Welcome, you guys. Uh, very great having you both here today. Why don't we start off with uh, Kadena Birds? Give us a quick little background about uh, who you are. What got you? I like to find out what got people into crypto to begin with, and then what Kadena Birds is all about. So take it away. Um, hey guys, thanks for having us here. Um, I'm Falcon, and I'm really happy to be here. Kadena Birds is a collection of 2,222 pixel birds, and our main goal is to create the most exclusive and authentic community on Kadena. <laughs> I know this might sound a cheesy intro. Uh, this might sound like a cheap intro, but um, I'm pretty sure I will change your mind throughout this AMA. Um, let me start with uh, our background. We are a team of six people, and we have an NFT background in blockchains like Ethereum and Solana, and also some experience in the token scene. We used to help people build their own projects. I mean, we offered our services like Web3 development. Uh, we build people's smart contracts, websites, and also helped building their community and also on their marketing. And after two years of experience, we finally decided to make our own project and we chose Kadena because we really believe in Kadena. It's technically uh, the best blockchain out there. They solved the uh, blockchain trilemma problem. You know, they can scale without compromising security and uh, the speed so yeah we chose cadena awesome yeah cadena is definitely a uh, top choice right now as it definitely provides a lot of things that other networks do not so let's get into a little bit about what made you guys choose with the bird theme what uh was there something like special about it that you really liked because it's like it's not i don't find it to be a very uh genuine or very uh, popular animal usually you know we see apes and uh animals like that so what made you choose to go with the bird theme they are very cute i will say that well you know owls um they're actually very cool animals uh, our birds are look like owls as well and um, we chose them we chose the owls because of the, their you know the team of wisdom we like the team and also we are inspired by a popular blockchain, popular Ethereum blockchain project called uh, Moonbirds. And since they made their art CC0, they made it public to, the, um, to everyone, actually. We decided to use uh, their art style and, of course, put our own uh, touches on them as well. And by using this, we brought one of the in my opinion, in our opinion, one of the best uh, projects on Ethereum to Kadena uh, using the best blockchain, of course. And that's why we chose the birds. Now, can you go over maybe possibly what people will see, like uh, how many kind of traits you have, maybe just a couple examples of the traits? Because I know a lot of people uh, really like to know kind of like behind the scenes of how many like uh, how many traits? Because it's only going to be, you said, 2,222 pieces. So to generate those kind of art pieces, you'd, I figured you'd probably have between, I don't know, 10 and 15 different traits or so. You Maybe uh, give us a rundown of uh, what we expect to see, maybe like, you know, what kind of uh, hats or shirts or background is going to be a trait. Uh, just kind of break it down a little bit more detailed for us. Sure. I mean, um, we actually gone overboard with this because our designer really like to draw and uh, design things. So we actually have enough layers, enough traits for uh, 140 million NFTs. Uh, I mean, at some point we did the math and when you multiply all these traits, 
uh, you can do you can make a lot of NFTs. So I'm pretty sure all twenty all two thousand uh, two hundred twenty two NFTs will look all unique. We have um, I don't have the exact number, but we have more than hundred trades. So yeah, I say they will look very well and unique. Now, do you have any one of ones that you're going to be throwing into the collection? A lot of uh, art collections like to do special one of ones with, you know, very specific traits or, you know, uh, homages to other projects. Are there going to be any NFTs like that for people to hunt for rarity hunters? Um, of course, we will. We have uh, some stuff, some special stuff for rarity hunters, but we don't have any one of ones because. Um, in our community, everyone is equal. We don't want to give anyone um, that kind of advantage. You know, that will change everything. Uh, but we have some badges called early birds. Our first 100 members will uh, get an NFT with a special bird badge. Uh, this badge will add a golden border to their NFTs and also a special badge on, to on the top right part. And we really have minted to thanks uh, because they made it possible using the marmalade standard. Uh, that would be a very hard uh, problem for us, but they are adding this to the uh, smart contract. So we don't have to compromise the decentralized aspect of the NFTs. We don't have to um, change, we don't have to falsely create a pronoun hash. I mean, we, we have two different pronoun hashes and we can always prove that all these NFTs created randomly. Now you say that this will be available to the first hundred people to mint, or is this like a whitelist thing that you're doing and the, there's only going to be a hundred addresses that are going to be able to mint this, or like I said, or is it going to be first 100 out the door to mint? Um, no, they are going to our OGs in the Discord server, so uh, they are already given out. But uh, we have actually one more slot because one of the OGs left our server. And I was thinking that maybe we can choose someone here uh, as the early bird, our last early bird that will get the special trait. Awesome. Well, uh, we'll come up with uh, hopefully some way to give it out to someone listening today. Possibly maybe they, we can... Uh have like uh, maybe minted or somebody can do a tweet out saying like, you know, follow this tweet and then we can use that to random pick or anything like that. And then the person who's in has to be in the chat to actually claim it. Or you could do something on discord where we can send everyone over to your discord thing. And the, we did that with, um, I believe it was core where they asked, a, a, they asked a specific question here and the first person to join their discord and answer the question in their discord won the, won the free item. So it kind of made sure that you had to be actually listening to, to win the thing. Just, just throwing ideas out there. There's a few different ways that we could handle that for sure. Yeah. I like the discord well, actually. <laughs> yeah. It helps, it helps also drive people, more people towards your server and get people involved with your community and everything there. Now, as far as this now, is there, is the OG roles going to be the only kind of, uh, whitelist type thing that you're doing or is there a whitelist as well um we have a whitelist as well um we already gave all the whitelist spots to the people but the whitelist role has the advantage of minting one hour early and nothing else so the price will be same for everyone who wants to mint but uh, our whitelist uh, holders will be able to mint one hour early and how do people obtain one of these whitelists if they're uh, are so interested since the OG roles are pretty much gone? Are they all, are all the whitelists are all spoken for as well? Yeah, uh, we made giveaways on our Twitter and our Discord server. And yeah, maybe people, some people uh, leave the Discord early so you can join the Discord server and see if uh, any whitelist spots available. Uh, I'm pretty sure our community managers will handle it. So what made you guys decide to go with Minted? Obviously, the uh, option for them to be able to help you with the specific 100 uh, border and stuff like that, special NFTs. But was there anything else that really drove you towards Minted? Were you ever planning on possibly doing like some of the other projects before of minting on one of the other launch pads or just possibly minting through your own website? Um. 
which was minted because they are the first project, the first launchpad to use the Marmalade standard. And the Marmalade standard is actually what drove us to the Kadena blockchain because they are obviously care a lot about the NFTs and decentralization. I mean, when you make a project on Solana, Solana is a centralized blockchain it, itself, but uh, when you make a project on Ethereum, you still have to rely on a lot of centralized sources. And there is no way to prove that you generated all the NFTs randomly or uh, everything, uh, you know, the whitelist, the minting, the smart contracts are so, so small in Ethereum. So there are a lot of centralization going around. The whitelists are giving to the people, um, insider people usually. But here, uh, there are a lot of ways to prove that we are a decentralized community. So we chose Minted because they use Marmalade platform, but also they are a really great team. They are uh, the most helpful on the Cadena ecosystem we have uh, so far seen. And since it's new, we are really excited to create this project with them. Yeah, it looks like you guys may be one of the first uh, projects to mint it. I believe KD Rocks was supposed to mint today, but I, I believe I think I saw a tweet coming out that they're having a couple last minute issues. But uh, great to see that uh, projects are starting to build up, mint is starting to actually release mints and people are really starting to get on board. Now, let's get a little bit uh, into more about your project in the DAO. How is your DAO going to work and how are uh, people who uh, invest in your project going to be able to get involved with the DAO? Well, our, uh, f firstly, let me talk about the project a little bit in detail. Our goal is to create an elite community on Cadena. I mean, just like Bordek Yacht Club on Ethereum, Moonbirds, Azuki, these projects are thriving because of their community and we are following their steps as well. So we will create an exclusive community, give networking opportunities, give alpha to our holders, and this, is, this, will, be, this will always be our main goal. But of course, we are also exploring more and more, and we will soon launch a token called Birdie, and our holders will get an airdrop. This token will be used, to, uh, we, will be used as a staking tool, so you can stake your tokens and provide uh, yourself a passive income channel but also, it's not only to uh, get the, these beautiful <laughs> rewards, APIs, but also you can uh, use our DAO to decide the future of this project. Our project, um, we are actually, uh, like I said, a team of six people coming from different backgrounds. So we have a lot of tools under our belt. We can provide our holders like GameFi, uh, P P2E games, Metaverse games, and a lot of stuff. But if they decide that through the DAO, they don't want that and they want physical events, merch, then we can do that. If they, if they want something else, uh, just the DAO will decide the future of this project. Like I said, we have a lot of tools under our belt, but our holders will use the DAO to uh, use us as their employees and we will build their vision. Now, when it comes to DAO funding, is it going to be strictly through the sale of NFTs or is there going to be an IDO for your birdie token? Uh, we will probably have to do IDO as well because uh, the NFT income will be used to grow our community even bigger because this project will work with a big community, with a strong community. And with the token launch, we'll also fund the DAO. Uh, but uh, NFT income, uh, which, is, which will be really small because our mid price will be 5k DA, and that will completely be used to build our community even bigger. All right, so let's get into if I, so if I go in and mint myself a bunch of birds, uh, what kind of privileges and things do I look at as a holder? Uh, I see that uh, poss uh, there's going to be airdrops of the tokens and things like that, but what other... Uh, kind of perks will come along with uh, being an early investor and an early mentor in this project? Could it be possibly like whitelist, permanent whitelist for future projects, any kind of other options like that? Yeah, actually, um, like I said, we will provide a lot of alpha to our holders. So by holding our project, you will get whitelists from upcoming big projects, uh, alongside with the staking feature, of course, you'll get a lot of birdie token 
by being early investor, you'll get airdropped uh, more and more birdie than uh, our new holders uh, because we really uh, want to reward loyalty. Um, also, in other projects, you will get special roles, wireless opportunities, and maybe even more. <laughs> you know, time will tell and the community will tell what else you will get. Now, just to go a little bit into more of the staking. Now, when you say staking to earn your birdie tokens, does that mean you will be people will be staking the NFTs themselves in, a, I assume, a, sta a staking platform on your website? Yeah, we will have a DAP uh, to make staking and unstaking easier. Um, our marketplace will be minted, uh, but the staking will all be on our website, our DAP. Also, the DAO will work on our website as well. Now, one thing about staking, because uh, I have on other networks got involved with staking my NFTs um, to earn their tokens back. Uh, will the person have to physically or actually send their NFTs to another smart contract that you guys control? Or will it just be kind of a, a call, an API call, and people get to hold the uh, NFTs still in their own private wallets? Um, they will send their NFTs to a smart contract, uh, but that, that will not be controlled by us. That will be controlled by the code. So they can unstake anytime they want. They can stake anytime they, anytime they want. Uh, they can claim their rewards. Code will be the law, and we will not be able to control their tokens. Okay, good. Just I always like to ask kind of questions like that because people always get concerned that, you know, they're they're buying these NFTs and then giving pretty much giving up control of them for a return of a of a token. And people just some people like get kind of worried that, you know, oh, the team's just gonna get all the money, then get all the NFTs sent to a contract and then just take off with everything. But luckily with Kadena and with the smart contracts and packed and stuff. At least it's all it's all very on on board. People can read the code for themselves. People can look at the transactions themselves. And speaking of uh, the contracts, are you guys going through any audits, uh, possibly from outside third companies or anything like that? Um, we don't have a, any audits made by our team, but the contracts will be made by Minted, and we really trust their uh, development team. Yeah, I'm, I'm speaking more on parts of like your staking smart contracts and things that you guys yourselves will be implementing. Not so much on oh. the, the DocuShield Minted side, but. Oh, yeah, of course. We will uh, have to explore all the uh, options. And of course, we need to come up with an audit system. Yeah, and I think, if, 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 just to cut in, if we're not to be mistaken, I think uh, we're going to be sharing our our staking contract with uh with the birds um that, that we have uh created for the doc bonds uh, I, and maybe maybe <laughs> I, th I thought that was it so maybe maybe that's why uh falcon was was saying that falcon was was that something we discussed or was was am, am i uh am i wrong on that because i know that we uh talked to a few people about our staking contract uh no we actually haven't talked yet but oh, okay. um I really trust you guys. I, I'm pretty sure we will come up with a uh, safe way to bring it to life. Okay, cool. No, I didn't know. I know we had spoken with another project as well about about utilizing the staking contract that we have. So I, I couldn't remember. I didn't have my notes in front of me. But okay, sorry to cut in like that. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no problem, man. I mean, in other blockchains, uh, things are, are already have been standardized. So they don't really care a lot uh, about these things. But in Cadena, we are still early. And yeah, we have to have an audit by a trustable company. Well, you can, if you want to talk about security, one very good example from today even is the recent uh, Binance smart chain hack. Apparently over 100 million was stolen. Uh, they had to literally shut down the entire blockchain, which just shows you how centralized BC, BSC really is. Uh, for the fact that they can just literally turn off their blockchain is a very bad sign. At least that's something that we'll never see with Kadena. Uh, they can't just all of a sudden turn off the blockchain. 
much like Selena and um, BSC. So that was a, a very eye opener, I think, for a lot of people today to see that happen, to see one of the, you know, Ethereum killer chains literally turn itself off. Like, I don't know, what's your guys' opinion on seeing that happen? Yeah, man, exactly. I mean, we love Kadena because they solve the scalability problem without compromising security. But as you can see on BSC or Solana, these blockchains go down, can go down anytime they want. I mean, in Binance, CZ once, the blockchain goes down. And this is a very proof of centralization. And this shouldn't be happening in a actually decentralized blockchain. And we chose Cadena, we love Cadena because we know that it won't be possible. Yeah, it's, um, it also shows, too, that you can never be too safe. Like, how long has uh, Binance Smart Chain been out and running and having all these tokens built on top of it, and someone is still finding flaws in their protocol? So it just goes to show that, you know, you no matter how strong you may think you've built something, there's always going to be problems and mistakes. And even Kadena will go through those problems and issues. I guarantee that. There's no blockchain out there that doesn't go through some kind of growing pains, especially in their first few years of being a live chain. So luckily we're still early and uh, the community and the, the ecosystem isn't super large where if there is a bug found, it may not be that big of an issue and, you know, it can be fixed rather easily. Cause like right now, you know, for example, if you have a problem with, it, just imagine if there was a problem with the Bitcoin product protocol, how hard it would be to get them to get all the nodes to upgrade. Like that's, that's a huge thing that people don't understand when it comes to blockchains is that for anything to change at the protocol level, you have to get a majority of the nodes that are running to accept your chain. And if not, you get a split, which is exactly what happened. Most people don't know the history of Ethereum. Ethereum was originally Ethereum Classic. The Ethereum yeah. Classic is the original Ethereum chain, but there was a split and they could not figure out which way to go. And it literally created two separate chains, which is what we have now. So it's, it's very uh, important to make sure that the code that you're putting out is both secure and stable and uh, that the community will all be behind the team. So luckily, like I said, with Kadena, we're still early and hopefully a lot of these things can be hashed out now as opposed to later. So uh, going back, getting back into talking about you guys, kind of got off on a tangent there. Um, I see that you guys are slowly building out. You've got your website now, uh, Twitter and Discord. Um, so what other, uh, what other ways can people get involved with your community? Are you guys looking to expand at all in your team? Are you looking for um, anyone to help out with your Discord or maybe start a Telegram channel? Is there any way that the community can help Kadena Birds? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think com community can join our Discord because the Discord uh, will be our main communication channel with our holders and the rest of the community and because of that we need a lot of moderators there currently we have three community managers and a moderator so uh, we, we are looking fine right now but uh, as the community grows we'll need more moderators and you can join our discord and apply from there we also used to have a telegram channel but uh, we don't think Telegram is a great for NFT projects. It's not really suited for all our needs. So we decided to close our Telegram channel and go fully on our Discord server. And we'll continue to build there. I can understand that. Uh, Telegram is... Um, I, I have mixed reviews of Telegram. I've been using Telegram for years, both in a personal and professional level. And uh, I find that just t Discord can be a much easier place to handle your community, to be able to speak directly to your community and to secure as well. Telegram can be a bit of a uh, minefield for scammers to work your way through. And it's very easy for them to make fake accounts and message your users pretending to be the admins and stuff like that. It, it's a very scary place. So yeah. I, I definitely, I can definitely see your want to move everything to Discord. 
it's just more built on community. There's more you can do in, in a Discord channel, like play really cool games with your community, have game nights with rewards for your members. And it just brings more interaction than, uh, tele than Telegram can offer. So I definitely see your want to lean towards that for sure. Yeah, exactly. But the Discord isn't always safe as well. Um, no. uh, in a couple of months back, uh, one of the projects I was working at got hacked and the founder was sleeping. Uh, it, was, it happened in uh, maybe 5 a.m. in the morning and some guys announced a link and that say our, our mint started, go and mint there, it, it will be cheap. And in a couple of hours, we'll be we'll closing in something like that. And everyone jumped and they got, they all got scammed. It was a bloodbath <laughs> for, for a project that was uh, new. It was really uh, something bad, but the team on Discord is actually working on that as well. Um, we also have a lot of security concerns with the Discord, but since we are experienced, we are trying to keep it as secure as possible. But still, you shouldn't click every link, even if the announcement ha happened on the official account. You should always double check in multiple platforms, in Twitter, in website. You should check everywhere. For sure. Never, never just trust any link that's posted. That's the way I look at it. Always just make sure that you know you get reassurance from an official account that you know is real, or even you know message one of the real admins and say, "Hey, is this real?" Because if it's not, you'll also be bringing it to their attention, which helps out everyone and helps secure everyone. So definitely good advice there. So let's talk now a little bit about Mint it more specifically. I know you guys have been sitting quietly in the background listening. Uh, let's talk about um, you guys and how well your uh, AC, your Alpha Creators Pass mints have been going and your Bond mints have going. I've seen you got those live. Uh, let's just give a little recap about what you guys have been up to the past uh, week or two. Yeah. Uh, you want to go, Mike? Or? <laughs> no, you got it. You got it. All right. All right. Well, thanks. Well, first of all, man, thank you for having us on the uh, on the set today, man. Always a pleasure to come up and talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what we're up to and get to know about all the other projects in the space. So always a good time. Um, the Alpha Creator Passes and the Doc Bonds, man. Um, that was our first uh, little rendezvous into into actually putting something out on Mainnet and Marmalade. And everything's been Everything's been as smooth as you could as you could expect, you know. Uh, so since we put out those contracts and um, and those collections, you know, it's been running flawlessly. Um, and you know, um, the market's a little down. Our sales, I think we've gotten through um, almost two hundred um, of each. And um, yeah, so I mean, they're they're going. If you guys haven't had the chance to pick one up, uh, the Alpha Creator Pass is a pass that's going to allow you to. Um, to host collections on the Mintit platform. Um, it's also something that you can put back on the secondary market. We're releasing a thousand of them um, to begin with. And um, that collection is still available. If you go to presale.mintit.studio, you'll be able to uh, connect your wallet to Chain8 and pick one of those up. The Doc Bond is a, um, it's a bond certificate, essentially, like a, an NFT version of a bond certificate that locks up 100,000 DOC tokens for you. Um, and um, we begin staking on those on the 1st of November. So you'll stake that down. And while you're staked, you're going to get a 50% APR that you can claim at any time. Um, and um, yeah, if you like, you can unstake it, put that, that bond back on the secondary market. Whoever's holding the bond, when uh, when the 1st of November 2023, a year later, comes around, that's who will get access to that 100,000 DOC uh, tokens. So a uh, cool little idea, I mean, uh, to help us raise some capital and, uh, you know, provide them the much needed liquidity that we needed um, with our token listing over on uh, KD Swap, which uh, has been great. And um, yeah, so, I mean, it was really cool just seeing that first write to the marmalade.ledger, you know, in mainnet. It was like, oh, we, all right, we did it. Because, <laughs> you know, testnet, uh, you know, things go well. And then when you move over, you never know what's going to happen, um, especially, you know, in the live environment. So that was really a cool moment for us to just be able to actually see that right there on chain eight on the blockchain. Um, 
one of our guys, Jules, <laughs> had printed it out and framed it. So that was a <laughs> pretty cool experience for us. Um, I'm probably going to do the same thing. But, uh, yeah, as far as building the marketplace has been going, you know, um, we've experienced um, a fair amount of, of small setbacks, and they're not really – um, not really much to do with the contract itself. It's like more with the front end marketplace. It's like when we change one thing, another thing breaks and it's just, you know, a chain reaction happens. Um, so that's what's, that's what we've been working, uh, through the last couple days, um, along with that. And, and also people's timelines, we we're supposed to launch with Nightbreakers, uh, collection. And there have just been some design changes on that front with Nightbreakers that, uh, we've been waiting um, to see the outcome on. And, you know, what we have seen from them has been awesome. I mean, the collection looked, looked badass to begin with. And the fact that they're mutating and all that was really cool. But, I mean, just at first when they said, hey, we're redoing the collection, I was like, what? What are you guys doing? No. And then when they showed me, like, what the collection updates look like, I was like, oh, okay. All right, cool. Like, let's <laughs> let's just try let's, – let's try to get this done. But, you know, um, really – really worth uh you know the time when i see i mean you know you got to trust the artist man when you have a creative person there and uh you know on the team and and they get that bug i mean you kind of just got to let them go with it man uh that's just how artists are you know um <laughs> so uh we're really excited to put that out as well um and we have the rocks that are minting today which we're doing a few little front end fix ups and everything. Um, and then, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be minting by PM, uh, by like around six to 8 PM, uh, Pacific time. I know everybody in UTC man gives us hell. Sometimes they're like, Hey, well you said you'd be minting today. Uh, but you know, our today starts a, a lot later than, <laughs> than some of your guys is we're behind the clock, um, over here in the Pacific coast. So, uh, yeah, man, it's been quite the whirlwind. Um, this was supposed to be just a quick project while we wait for updates uh, that will allow us to progress on the DocuShield front and building the DocuShield app. And it's completely kind of taken over, um, you know, a life form of its own in a positive way. And we are super excited where it's at. And, like, I mean, as much as we just want to drop it on everybody, uh, you know, uh, we want the user experience to be as clean as possible as well. So just out of curiosity, because um, I've noticed right now, if you go to like minted.studio, it's just the same same page you had before. But when it comes to like your minting for your uh, bonds and for your creators pass, it was like presale.minted. Does that mean that each project will have its own kind of section of the website? Or is it going to yeah, be, are you working, is that kind great. of the idea? Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Great question though, man. And um no, that that is just like a pre-sale site. Uh, that that's not at all what the UI is going to look like for for the marketplace itself. But yeah, everybody will have like collection. It'll be like minted.studio forward slash collection forward slash uh, Kadena Birds or Kadena Rocks or uh, Nightbreakers uh, or what have you. So um, and the cool thing also is is that um, you know if you're selling NFTs on Minted, um, you know you can also sell NFTs on your own website too. So just like we have presale.mintit.studio, um, you know, where we're selling those NFTs, our, our presale NFTs, we also would be able to put those on docuShield.app. We would be able to sell them pretty much from any any URL we wanted to. So if the Kadena Birds said, okay, that's cool. Well, we want to also allow users to mint on on our website, then they could easily do that by calling a function in the contract. And um, yeah, they could mint from multiple places. Um, if they wanted to on their end, possibly even mint with their own token, there could be a way um, to facilitate that, you know, um, or purchases with their own token. So Marmalade really opens up um, a whole world of, of stuff that's, that's possible uh, that we wouldn't be able to do really anywhere else. So in that sense, are you kind of talking about like a widget that someone could add to their site that would just kind of link to your back end? Not really a widget, really. It's just it's just a script that'll that'll call a function in our smart contract. Yeah. Um so, oh, so any, it'd, be, any... it'd be something they'd put right something they'd put right into their own website CSS. Yeah. Yeah, they would they would build it into their own website, exactly. That makes that makes a little bit more sense. I was thinking maybe like you guys were offering an API service that could just call to your uh, RPCs and things like that, but kind of like the idea right. better of it being an actual script. 
Well, you know, using the pack leg API is actually what uh, what makes that all possible. So, I mean, Kadena has already already laid the work out there um, with the API that makes it, you know, a possibility to do that. So very cool. Just out of curiosity, because I'm starting to learn a little bit more about websites and how they operate. Are you guys still working on a like uh, GitHub pull request system for updating your app or have you sw- have you guys built a CMS? No, yeah, we are uh, we are working in GitHub right now for everything. It's uh, private GitHub at the moment, and as soon as we pull the trigger and um, go live, which is possibly today, we're going to be making it public. Um, but as as we work through everything and you know put really put the you know put all the <laughs> the elbow grease into it, we're keeping it private. And then um, yeah, as soon as we're open for everybody. Um, to start minting and stuff, we want to make sure that that code is available for everybody to see themselves and, um, you know, um, yeah, browse through it and, uh, you know, just see what it's made of, how the contracts look. And yeah, any feedback is always welcome, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, so right now we're on old, we're on GitHub. We hooked up GitHub to Netlify and Netlify is uh, controlling our staging, our production and our testing uh, environments. So if I, oh, I know, I know stuff. all about that. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it gets, I mean, it gets right a little confusing sometimes. You know how it goes, but uh, <laughs> it's yeah, like well, uh, our, our, yeah. Well, we built we built the our uh, Kadena ecosystem site right from scratch and started off with GitHub and pull requests and. You know, you're always waiting for someone to push that request and put all the updates through. But now we have a, a CMS, which makes it so much easier for you just to go in, quickly change things, add things. But like you said, you add one thing and you do, you make one little tiny mistake and it breaks everything. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got that domino effect, man. Now for our DocuShield site that we're, that we're um, in the middle of re, re um, designing, we, we are using a CMS with that called strappy um along with um with next js so that yeah, does make that's sense. the one we use oh strappy cool yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah really cool and flexible you know cms um and it beats the hell out of using something like wordpress or, or anything like that you know just the flexibility did you have uh, something to add there kadena birds go right ahead yeah, I just wanted to thank you guys for making all these uh, things open source because it allows builders and developers to extend uh, building on Kadena and you are actually making our life a lot easier by doing thank it. You. <laughs> thank you, man. No problem. Absolutely, man. I mean, anything we do and we put out, we want to... We want to definitely make it, you know, open source for the community. Um, you know, that being said, you know, while we're building, it's really important for us to, to uh, you know, be kind of uh, private about what we're doing. But, <laughs> yeah, just uh, uh, trust issues. <laughs> yeah, that's open, totally understood. Open source, <laughs> yeah, open source can have, uh, open source can be a two-way, uh, two-edged sword in some senses, in the sense yeah. that, you'll release all your GitHub to build your website and then someone will clone it and make a clone of your website and use it to scam people. Ex- that's yeah. that's a sca- the scary side of open source. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Or you put all that work in and then, um, you know, somebody forks it and does the finishing touches quicker than you get to because, you know, they have a lot of time on their hands or, or better resources. And, uh, yeah, getting beat to the punch is another scare, you know, off of – after pouring, you know, months worth of labor into it. Um, so yeah, but, but yeah, what well, we definitely plan on just like once we're out and rolling, man, we're going to put the, we're gonna just hit the button, make that, that stuff all public for you guys. I, I can see making the, uh, the minted marketplace part, uh, definitely public, but when it comes to your actual docu shield stuff, uh, I, I would mm. not go open with that because it's a it's something yeah. that is very proprietary and something mm-hmm. where security is of the utmost importance so you Absolutely. wouldn't want someone cloning you definitely don't want someone cloning that app that's for sure Absolutely, man. Absolutely. No, you're 100 percent right. And yeah, we've had internal discussions about about that. So that's why right now, like everything on our GitHub is is pretty much private. Um, but yeah, as soon as Mintate comes out, that's going to be made public. And um, yeah, that's like you said, something that I think the community deserves to see, you know, the contracts behind that and and everything there. But yeah, when you come to a privacy and security application, you know, um, it does change things up quite a bit. Yeah, because you, you can see like um 
even a lot of like open source wallets and things like that, the amount of people who have made clones of them and people, you know, people don't do their own due diligence, it seems like anymore. And they're just very quick to want to just do something without even really doing their due diligent research, making sure that, you know, the SL, the safety certificates are the correct certificates or for a website, you know, just basic little steps that a lot of people take for granted now and don't bother to go through to secure themselves. And it's really a shame because crypto is all about, that's what crypto is all about, is about taking your own personal security back. But at the same time, you have to step up with the responsibilities that come along with that. Yep, and then DeFi is there to put the FOMO on things like, you know, if you miss the opportunity, then you're amongst the last people to adopt and could be, you know, you can get the shitty end of the stick. But uh, so, yeah, definitely the FOMO um, doesn't help, man, when people, you know, rush into those things. And I mean, it could happen to anybody, man. It's happened. It's happened to me before. And, I, you know, I've been in crypto for like seven years, uh, um, give or take. And um, yeah, man, it's just hard. <laughs> it's hard not to sometimes, you know, then uh, then you're kicking yourself. So it's just human nature. We all got to learn to kind of like check ourselves and and do our diligence for sure. Yeah, I remember back uh, when the original ICO craze of all these crazy awesome. projects popping up and promising all these things. And just to see now, you know, like four or five years later how many of those projects are actually still around and still working. You know, it's just a small fraction of them really. Yeah. And if they are, man, they're trading for a tiny percent of what, of what they were, you know? Um, and still like, I know the CW was like hard wallet was one that I went into kind of heavy on Cardano and, um, and they still don't even have a wallet, dude. <laughs> it's like, this is like five, six years ago. <laughs> like what's going on over there guys. Uh <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, mean, I think Meld was another one that I went pretty pretty hard into on Cardano, and uh, yeah, they've come out. You know, it was supposed to like completely flip the finance industry upside down, and all they've put out is a staking contract so far. Uh, so you know, you get stuff like that, man, and uh, yeah, you take the good with the bad. Yeah, you got to be careful of those projects that promise the world, but uh, you know, have nothing really, no real background or anything to show for it. But luckily, we have a lot of really good, solid teams and solid projects right now, building on Kadena, like uh, Minted, DocuShield, Nightbreakers, Kadena Birds, all of these amazing projects that are led by teams that actually want to build. And right now is the time to build and the time for people to get out there and get their names made and get the get their communities built before all the FOMO and all of the craziness hits. But I, I feel like we're still probably at least another year of this uh, dark times ahead. I don't really see much uh, pulling us out anytime soon, but you never know. I, I've been definitely wrong in the past, uh, but you know, I've been in this now since late 2017. So I've seen the trends. I've seen them go up and down, but you no, know, it's you, you never know what can set us off, and hopefully, when it does set off, Kadena will be one of the ones that uh, get the recognition and take off and pull us all into the the next stratosphere and the next uh, the next iteration of the ecosystem. Because once that happens, we're going to see things happen tenfold. And I believe one of the things that's going to really start kicking this off for Kadena is mint it having that marketplace and having that launch pad where people can make it to make it easier for people because like i've always said it's the turnkey projects that are going to get the most uh use case and the most uh people drawn towards it because that's what we need we need to make blockchain turnkey simple plug and play kind of simple those uh, are the way the way into the future and you guys are really seem to be building upon that idea Thank you, man. Thank you. And yeah, no, and that's, I mean, we're happy to take our space, you know, in, in the Kadena ecosystem. That doesn't mean to say that, you know, um, that there's other marketplaces that aren't going to completely just kill it, man. Like, uh, we're really, we're really looking forward to a uh, hypersense NFT market that I think kicks off with alpha slayers. And, you know, there's a, there's a place where you get a really well vetted pr uh, product and, um, you put them out and you invest time into marketing them and, you know, the exclusivity behind that. And then there's also, you know, a place in the market for, uh, you know, a marketplace where, you know, anybody can come and, and launch their dream project and, and you know, build a community under it and, and all of that. So, I mean, I think right now Kadena is just kind of, 
getting to get you know <laughs> really getting a feel for for where the community is and where it lies and we are just super stoked to see you know juggernauts like hypersend and and katie katie swap katie launch doing their part and and you know um fill in those roles as well yeah there's lots of uh lots of amazing things on the horizon for cadena and hopefully like i said um hopefully that will come to fruition soon and we'll see just this huge explosion i think you can probably see it now where like we put out a tweet the other day listing i don't know over a dozen projects that are minting just this month so you know it's it's great to see that things are finally amping up things are finally starting to roll out and all these groups and teams that have put all this work in over the past you know like six months more probably for a lot of them is finally starting to see the fruits of their labor come come through Definitely, definitely. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, whether there, there are pauses or little delays and stuff, guys, I mean, um, we're always just trying to put out the best product that's available and hit those um, hit those goals as closely as we possibly can. So, I mean, that being said, man, I, I mean, I probably should get back to work <laughs> on, uh, on getting the rest of this stuff going and, um, you know, making sure the team is all uh, prepared for tonight uh, to go live with the Rocks. Awesome. Well, uh, I know you said, Kadena Burns, that you wanted to uh, try to give away one of your uh, OG roles. So uh, if you wanted to do that, why don't we go ahead and do that? Why don't, uh, do you have any idea of maybe like a uh, code word or something that's special to the people that are listening right now for them to be able to go join your Discord and say this word? Uh, yeah, you can join our Discord and ask, ask for whitelist and state that you are coming from this AMA, the first person will get the early bird and the, the rest of them, the rest of us, uh, will get the whitelist. Well, let's, let's we do are... this. How about, uh, how about everyone listening right now, click on the Cadena Birds logo, go to their profile. There's a Discord link there. Go join their Discord and then make sure you, you come back and you're still listening. We'll give everyone a couple minutes here to go and join their Discord server and go through you know, the verifi verification steps and blah, blah, blah. And uh, in a couple minutes, why don't we just, we'll put out one certain keyword so that it gives people a chance to get in there, get ready, and then they have to drop a, I'll, I'll think of a, I'll think of a, a very special word. Uh, we'll give it, a, like I said, a minute or two for people to join in the Discord if they're not already part of your Discord. And that way it gives everyone a fair shot who's listening right now to partake. Yeah, it makes sense. Perfect. So while we wait, uh, so very exciting. You guys are minting this weekend. You're going to be, uh, I guess, what, the second project, I guess, to mint on Minted. If, uh, uh, or no, maybe the third. I think we have Kadena Coin Flip on tomorrow and then you guys on the Sunday on the 9th. We got like, I got, uh, my calendar is just full right now of all these different uh, mint dates for all these different projects. It's kind of crazy to yeah. see like all this action happening. It's really great to see, but but you know it's just it's been so long. I've been watching where like you know you get one mint a, a week or maybe a couple a month. Now we got like a dozen in like a matter of two or three weeks here. So it's going to get very busy, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy month, man. For Kadena, I think it, this is the biggest month so far for the NFT project. And yeah, we will be the third uh, Marmalade project on Chain 8. And I think this itself is um, actually uh, makes me proud, you know, because in one or two years, people will call us and as a historic NFT, you know. Um, this is a really big trend right now in Ethereum. A lot of old projects from 2015, 16, they're even NFTs, but... Uh, anything close remotely similar to nfts are actually popping off right now and i'm really happy to be one of the first in the one of the first projects on kadena all right well it looks like we got a bunch of people have at least a few people here that have joined in for your discord so make sure you guys if you haven't already get in there and join the discord uh let's see let me find a a good bird theme word that we can use here maybe a, a type of bird I know you guys are going with owls, but let's try to find something that's maybe not so obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here we go. How about the first person 
to type the word feathers. Feathers. We'll get the OG roll. So whoever's, if you guys are listening and you're sitting in their chat, first person to type feathers. You know, like bird feathers, like you yeah, know, fly, fly, bird feathers. Hey, there we go. And we got it in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. That, uh, I like to try to make things a little bit more as fair as possible, you know, and it also draws a little bit people more towards your discord. But also, you guys, you know, there's going to be, I'm sure, other chances for you to possibly win whitelist. Like they said, people have been leaving the, the server. So spots have been opening up. So make sure you guys join their discord. Say hello. Make sure you participate and be part of the community. And I'm sure good things will come to all who uh, take care. Awesome. Well, uh, if anyone listening as well also has any questions for either Cadena Birds or for Mint It, uh, feel free to send in a request to speak. But uh, I know I learned quite a bit about uh, both projects. I know I've always been a fan of pixelated art. I myself uh, had my own little pixelated art uh, NFT, very short-lived uh, collection on the Elrond Network uh, about a year or two ago. But uh, just kind of work took over and just didn't have time to be making pixel art anymore. But who knows, maybe I will again in the near future. I'll, maybe I'll make another run at it on Cadena here. And maybe I'll uh, be joining with my, uh, my dogs. I had pixelated dogs. I'll, maybe I'll post a, a picture on my Twitter of what I used to make. But so uh, who knows, maybe in the future you'll be, uh, I'll be doing AMAs with other projects to, <laughs> support, to promote my own project. So. Maybe in the future. We'll see. That would no be promises. awesome, man. <laughs> awesome. I well, really love I wanna... start and would like to see what you, what you got as well. For sure. I'll, uh, like I said, I, um, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, my Twitter is uh, Yuka Labs Chris. So if uh, you guys don't follow me, feel free to drop me a follow there. I'll drop a few pictures of the uh, NFTs I used to make there. But uh, I want to thank both Mintit and Cadena Birds for stopping by tonight. I uh, learned quite a bit about you guys, both of you. Everyone listening, make sure you follow all of their socials. Follow Mintit on Twitter, on Discord, on pretty much all of their socials, as well as Cadena Birds. And make sure to drop us a follow as well if you're not already. So uh, thank you very much, both of you guys, for joining us tonight. It was absolutely awesome speaking to everyone. Same, man. Thank you very much. I don't know. It looks like maybe uh, I think Adrian was the one talking on the DocuShield thing, but I think uh, I don't know. Is, who's, who's still on the Minted account there? Is, I think we got Mark on the Minted account. <laughs> it's Kadena Mark. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Well, thank you very much, every guy, you guys, for both joining us tonight. Um, like I said, if you guys need any support or anything from us, always – the lines of communication are always open. Drop us a quick line. We're more than happy to uh, help promote solid projects. So thank you very much for joining us, everybody. And uh, make sure to follow all the accounts, stay up to date, and uh, take part in hopefully some really cool NFT mints coming up in the very, very near future. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night. Take care. Good night. Thank you, guys. That wraps up another amazing AMA. Thank you for listening. Here at KPN, we strive to bring an open platform for projects being built on Kadena to present themselves to the community. Please ensure to do your own research on each project before investing. Also, make sure to follow us on our social media from Twitter to subscribing to our weekly newsletter. All the links can be found directly on our SoundCloud profile page. Thank you very much for listening and take care.